Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are going to see a bunch of problems uh, in this lecture and maybe even the next few lectures. Uh, so far we have looked at uh, various uh, point estimation methods, how to estimate a parameter from IID samples and we looked at uh, three different uh, methods, uh, mainly uh, two from the frequentist side and one from the Bayesian side. Uh, the first one was method of moments. Uh, where we equated the two moments and solved for uh, the parameter in some sense. And the second was uh, maximum likelihood. Uh, again, it is a very interesting procedure by which you could derive an estimate for the unknown parameter. The last thing we saw brings in this interesting notion called prior and uh, posterior and uses Bayes rule in a very smart way, a uh, very intuitive sort of estimation method. Uh, which we called as Bayesian estimator. Okay? So, what we are going to see in uh, this and the next few lectures is a bunch of examples, different types of uh, things that you should be comfortable doing, uh, different types of problems that you should be comfortable solving, uh, having learnt so much of uh, parameter estimation methods. Okay? So, let us get started. So, the first type of problem is sort of like a very textbookish problem. Uh, distribution is given to you, you are given a certain number of samples and then you have to find the method of moments estimate, the maximum likelihood estimate and the Bayesian estimate for a particular prior. Okay? So, very, very standard textbook type example. So, notice the situation here. Uh, there is a discrete random variable, it takes uh, four values 0, 1, 2, 3 and it has some probability for taking each of these values. And notice there is this unknown parameter theta, right? There is a distribution and there is an unknown parameter theta. And then uh, you have to estimate theta from samples. Some samples are given to you. Here is a particular set of samples. You can think of them as x1, x2, xn, etc. And now the problem is uh, how do you do the estimation? Okay, so, very standard textbook problem and you should have some comfort in working with these kind of problems. This is a basic skill uh, in this area. So, let us get started. I will quickly show you uh, how one can work on uh, various uh, methods here. Okay? So, that is the distribution. Let us see uh, method of moments. So, we will start with method of moments. Okay, uh, so you, you're going to write expected value of x, isn't it? So method of moment involves equating expected value of x to the sample moment and solving for something. So first step is to find expected value of x. So that's uh, probability that x equals zero times zero plus probability that x equals one times one plus probability that x equals two times two plus probability that x equals three times three. Simple enough uh, formula. So, now uh, one needs to simplify this. Uh, so, you have uh, theta by three plus four by three minus four theta by three plus one minus theta. So, the constant term is just 7 by 3 and then there is this theta by 3 minus 4 theta by 3. So, that will just be minus theta. So, you will get minus 2 theta. So, this is something that I am getting. Okay, Seems to be fine. Okay, So, this is what it is. So, in your MM method, method of moments, uh, what do you do? You take the sample moment and equate it to the distribution moment, right? So, your sample moment uh, we use, you can use different uh, notation here. Uh, the sample moment uh, the sample mean so to speak, sorry, in this case. Uh, we can call it, uh, I do not know, x bar if you want. It is x1 plus xn divided by n. Okay, So, your samples are samples are x1 to xn. So, in this particular case n is uh, something like 10 and those are the samples given to you. So, you can in general write it as x1 to xn and the sample mean you, <coughs> you can keep it as x bar. Okay? So, then how do you e uh, do the method of moments? You equate x bar to 7 by 3 minus the estimate of theta mm. Right? So, from here you calculate theta mm as 1 by 2 
7 by 3 minus x bar. Okay, so that is the answer. So, in this particular case, you have to just find x bar and substitute this back in here. So, if you want to find the x bar here, uh, so in this case, x bar will work out to 2 plus 2, 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, 14, 16, 19, 19 by 10, that is 1.9. Okay, I hope uh, this works out reasonably. 7 by 3 is uh, 2 point something. So, you will get uh, 1 by 2 times 7 by 3 minus 1.9, whatever that number is, right. So, 1.9 times 3 is 5.7. If you do 7 minus 5.7, it is uh, 1.3. So, it is 1.3 by 6 or if you want, you can write it as 13 by 60. So, whatever this works out to, that is your theta hat uh, method of moments. So, that is as simple as that. Uh, so, you see the simplicity of method of moments is very, very appealing. The next uh, we can do is maximum likelihood, you will see this will be a little bit more complicated. Okay. So, you have to write down the likelihood of seeing a particular sample. So, so here we will need uh, uh, you know uh, some, some notation here. So, you have samples being x1 to x1. So, we will say uh, you know n0 is the number of zeros in samples. Similarly, you know n1 uh, number of ones in samples, so on, right? n2 and n3. Uh, analogous definition is there. Okay, so n2 is the number of twos in the sample, n3 is the number of threes in the sample, so on. Okay, so the likelihood you can write it down as. 2 theta by 3 raised to the power n0 times theta by 3 raised to the power n1 times 2 by 3 into 1 minus theta raised to the power n2 times 1 by 3 1 minus theta raised to the power n3. Okay, do you see why this is true? So, remember what is likelihood? It is probability that capital X1 equals small x1. Okay, so, remember that L equals probability that x1 equals x1, probability that x2 equals x2 dot 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 probability that xn equals xn. Okay. So, when you multiply all these probabilities, all that matters is how many zeros you got, how many ones you got and then you simply raise it to the power of that, right. So, 2 theta by 3, the probability that you got 0 raised to the power n0, n1, n2, n3, that is it, right. So, so simple. So, you can write this as uh, 2 by 3, so, so, you, so, you, so, you can sort of now multiply all the constants separately. So, you will get 2 power n0 plus n2 divided by 3 power, you know, n0 plus n1 plus n2 plus n3, that is just n and then theta power n0 plus n1, 1 minus theta power n2 plus n3, okay. So, that is your, uh, you know, likelihood. Uh, to find the maximum likelihood estimate, we know that log of the likelihood is uh, slightly better. So, you do log L. So, you will get log of this constant term. It is quite irrelevant. The constant term is uh, the same for all uh, distributions. So, we do not have to all values of theta. So, you do not have to worry about it. Uh, only the theta factor matters log theta plus n2 plus n3 log 1 minus theta. So, you differentiate differentiate with respect to theta and equate to 0 to get your ML estimate, right. So, if you differentiate, you are going to get n0 plus n1 times 1 by theta plus n2 plus n3 times 1 by 1 minus theta times minus 1 equals 0. So, that is the derivative. Derivative of log is 1 by x, but this is log 1 minus theta, right. So, you do 1 by whatever is in there then multiply it with the derivative of whatever was in there. That is the chain rule of the differentiation. We use that. So, now uh, you write it out, solve it, you know, solve for theta from these two. You so take it to this side, multiply it out, theta will go on this side, theta will come here. So, you will see uh, you will get theta hat ml, which is the solution of this, right? Solution 
is theta hat m l and that you will see is equal to n 0 plus n 1 divided by n. That is your theta hat m l. Okay. So, uh, number of uh, zeros plus number of ones divided by n that ends up being uh, you know uh, theta hat m l it is actually not very surprising. So, number of zeros and number of ones is what? Uh, in this sequence you have got 1, 2, 3, 3 out of 10. So, this comes out as 3 by 10. So, that is the formula for the uh, that is the result of the m l estimate. So, you can see the m l estimate is uh, slightly higher uh, point this is point 0.3 here you got something much smaller, uh, but you know it is ok. So, different types of estimates uh, you get different uh, answers for this ok. So, for the so, so this kind of uh, simple use of the method of moments and maximum likelihood is uh, very very important. Let us go to the next thing which is uniform 0 1 prior ok. So, I have some space here for working out. So, let us uh, go to the Bayesian setting the prior is uh, uniform let me just write it out carefully theta is uh, uniform 0 1. So, if you were to write the prior distribution this is going to be 1 for 0 less than theta less than 1 for 1 put less than or equal to it does not matter ok. So, this is the uh, this is the prior. So, what is the posterior? Posterior is going to be equal to uh, or at least proportional to likelihood times the prior ok. So, what is likelihood? Likelihood we already wrote before. So, you can go back and see the likelihood here it this was the likelihood times the prior. So, so I will drop the constant right. See remember in the likelihood you have this constant 2 power n naught plus n 2 by 3 power n it does not depend on theta. So, you can drop those things. So, you will get proportional to theta power n 0 plus n 1 times 1 minus theta power n 2 plus n 3 times the prior, the prior is just 1 you know, this is just 1. So, you simply get theta power n 0 plus n 1, 1 minus theta power n 2 plus n 3. What is this distribution? By now, you should know this distribution theta between 0 and 1, theta power something, 1 minus theta power something. What is that distribution? That is the beta distribution with the first parameter being n 0 plus n 1 plus 1 notice that plus 1 that comes there and then you have n 2 plus n 3 plus 1 ok. So, remember beta beta of alpha beta is uh, you know theta power alpha minus 1 times 1 minus theta power beta minus 1 there is that minus 1 that you keep in your mind all the time. So, you have this plus 1 plus 1 uh, that shows up in this distribution ok. So, theta hat base is going to be the posterior mean. We can take the posterior mean as the uh, good uh, estimate and the posterior mean is just n 0 plus n 1 plus 1 divided by uh, n 0 plus n 1 plus 1 plus n 0 plus I am sorry plus n 2 plus n 3 plus 1 and n 0 plus n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 is equal to n ok. So, this sum is equal to n. So, you just get n 0 plus n 1 plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So, notice this use of the prior got this plus 1 plus 1 you know the prior being uniform, uniform corresponded to alpha equals 1, beta equals 1 right. If you use the general beta prior you will get a plus alpha here plus beta here and then you will have a plus alpha in the numerator plus beta in the denominator and we have no real motivation to pick a value of alpha beta which is different from uniform, uniform seems like a, a reasonable uh, estimate one can justify that. So, you get the plus 1 and the plus 2. So, in this particular case we know that n 0 plus n 1 was 3. So, instead of saying 3 by 10 we will say 3 plus 1 by 10 plus 2. So, this is 4 by 12 ok. So, point this is again 1 by 3 as opposed to 0.3 you are getting 0.3333 ok. So, notice how in uh, these kind of problems in discrete estimation uh, when you see a certain number of samples the maximum likelihood simply takes fractions of the samples. And when you use a beta prior you are you, going to add some plus 1 plus 2 just some additional plus 1 plus 2 to adjust for some uh, you know the fact that you did not know anything before or something like that it gives you a penalty of plus 1 and plus 2 ok this is one way of thinking about it. 
so this will show up quite often when you use uh, priors like this. Okay. So once again, I want to remind you this kind of problem is very textbook standard problem in this area. Uh, given a certain distribution, given samples, how do you go about and mechanically work out carefully the method of moments estimate, maximum likelihood estimate and the, uh, the Bayesian uh, posterior mean estimate with the, with the prior. Okay. That's important. Okay, the second problem is very, very similar except uh, instead of using, uh, you know, the discrete distribution, we are in the geometric uh, world. So, we are going to look at uh, the geometric uh, distribution P and then try and work out uh, this, these estimates. Okay, so let us start with method of moments. Let me see if I can speed this up a little bit. Uh, expected value of x, x is uh, x is uh, geometric p, right? An expected value of x we know is 1 by p, okay? And if you equate x bar to 1 by p hat mm, you are going to get uh, p hat mm being equal to 1 by x bar or, uh, you know, uh, the way we write it, uh, you know, instead of writing it like this, uh, let me write it a bit differently. I think I always get confused like this. So, p equals 1 by x. So, we always write p hat mm to be, you know, 1 by x bar. So, that is n by x1 plus xn. You simply, you know, replace the small letters by capital letters, right, the random variables. So, you get an estimator, okay. So, this is your estimator for method of moments. Easy, is not it? Quite, quite fast. Uh, let us go to maximum likelihood. This is where sometimes there is some slightly more algebra, okay. So, the likelihood is uh, 1 minus p power x 1 minus 1 times p, 1 minus p power x 2 minus 1 times p, right. Remember the samples are going to be x 1, x 2, x n and probability that x1 equals x1 is 1 minus p power x1 minus 1, x1 minus 1 failures and the x1th success, right. So, that is how uh, probability goes. We will have 1 minus p power xn minus 1 times p, okay. It is just writing things down mechanically. So, now you can group things together. p appears in every term. So, you will have a p power n and then 1 minus p, just sum up everything, you are going to get x1 plus xn minus n, okay. So, once again log of the likelihood is much, much easier to work with. So, you will get n log p plus x1 plus xn minus n log 1 minus p, okay. So, we will differentiate and equate it to 0. So, you get n by p plus x1 xn minus n times 1 by 1 minus p times minus 1 equals 0. You solve for this, you are going to get p equals n by x1 plus xn. So, I am skipping a few steps here. So, you can uh, multiply this out, write this out, minus n p minus n p will cancel, you will just get p n, uh, n equals x 1 plus x 2 times p and then p will be n by your quarter 1, okay. So, you can write this down. So, you will get that. So, p hat m l you see wonderfully is the same as the method of moment. So, we, we got uh, uh, different answers in the previous uh, case, right. In the previous example that we saw, the method of moments estimate was different from the m l estimate. In this case, uh, both of these are exactly the same. So, notice what is going to happen with the uniform prior though, you know. So, you remember the previous case also when we did the uniform prior, so you got some plus 1, plus 1 like that. So, you will you will see something like that will happen when you use the uniform prior, okay. So, let us just do Bayesian with the uniform prior, okay. Prior is uh, P being uniform, okay. So, it is it is good to write uh, P being uniform 0, 1. So, the posterior is uh, proportional to or uh, the likelihood. The likelihood we know what, what is the likelihood, it is written down right here. P power n 1 minus P power x 1 plus x n minus n times the prior, prior is just 1, is not it? So, this is likelihood, this is prior because it was uniform, it ended up being like this. And once again, we get this wonderful beta distributions. Look at how 
I mean, any time you have this Bernoulli geometric type thing, this is this posterior, this prior end ending up being beta. Uh, so, so this is n, so you need n plus 1 here, right? So, alpha has to be n plus 1. So, that do not forget this plus 1. This is a common mistake. A lot of people make this mistake. Uh, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it is unavoidable, but uh, you can try and uh, figure out this, uh, this thing carefully, okay? So, watch out for this plus 1, this, this alpha and beta in the beta distribution. There is a minus 1 that comes in there, okay? So, theta p hat base with this uniform prior is going to be uh, posterior mean and uh, posterior mean will work out to alpha by alpha plus beta. So, remember beta distribution uh, expected value or mean equals alpha by alpha plus beta, something to remember. So, n plus 1 by n plus 1 plus this whole thing. So, this n and n will cancel, this 1 would be there. So, we will get a n plus 1 by uh, you know x 1 plus x n plus 2, ok. So, that is the distribution. So, you notice this plus 1 and plus 2 there, ok. That happens because of this uh, prior entering the picture, ok. Once again, straightforward in some sense, but you have to just take some care and notice how intuitively this 1 by the sample mean is coming out to be the p hat and all that, all of that is uh, very uh, simple to explain as well, okay. Geometric is done. Uh, the next is Poisson. I think you should just beat yourself to death with different situations so that <laughs> you know how the method of moments MLE and uh, base work, uh, you know, very clearly. It is uh, easy enough. Uh, if after so many years I can work these out, you can also work it out, ok. So, method of moments. So, so I mean I, I like to say M M is method of moments, ok. You should give me that much. It is a uh, simple uh, simplification, ok. So, the Poisson distribution mean is just lambda, ok. Expected value of x is just lambda and that I am going to just say is equal to x bar, right. So, the lambda hat uh, ml is just uh, capital X 1 plus X n by n, it is just sample mean, right. So, it is very easy. So, when, when the unknown parameter is equal to the sample mean, you are in the simplest of possible worlds with the method of moments, ok. ml uh, maybe will be a little bit more tricky. So, let me just uh, get started here. ml is again maximum likelihood. Uh, very commonly written uh, thing. L is, uh, uh, remember, I mean, if, if, if you are getting confused by this, once again, uh, you have to remember all these formulae, what is this distribution, what is that distribution, it can be very confusing. Probability of x i equals small x i is e power minus lambda, lambda power x i pi x i factorial, right. So, that is the formula for the Poisson distribution, ok. So, the likelihood is going to be e power minus lambda times x 1, sorry times lambda power x 1 by x 1 factorial times e power minus lambda, lambda power x 2 by x 2 factorial, likewise till e power minus lambda, lambda power x n by x n factorial, ok. So, that is the likelihood. Uh, we know we like to combine all these terms together. If you do that, you are going to get e power minus n lambda, ok. And uh, you know there will be this, I will just say proportional, I will drop these x1 factorial, x2 factorial, x n factorial, they do not play any role, they do not depend on lambda. So, whatever lambda may be, they, they remain the same. So, you do not have to worry about those things, you can just write proportional and only keep things that involve the lambda, do not forget the terms that involve your unknown parameters, you should keep them all. So, you get lambda power x1 plus x n, right, easy enough, right. And then what do you do for differentiation? Before that in these kind of cases, it is always helpful to do uh, logarithms. No log is a monotonic function, so it does not affect the uh, optimal value in any way. Uh, so, if you differentiate and equate to 0, you are going to get minus 1 plus x1 plus xn times 1 by lambda equal to 0 and from here one can quickly read out lambda hat ml is this guy, ok. So, sample mean it is not really surprising, uh, it has to work out like this in almost all cases, ok. 
Okay, so gamma, alpha, beta prior, you have to find the posterior distribution, not down the likelihood, it is just good to remember the likelihood, e power minus lambda, lambda power, this is good to remember the likelihood. What is this gamma prior by the way? So, let me just write it down, gamma uh, alpha beta is uh, PDF is basically proportional to, in fact, uh, maybe I should write it down. So, if x is this, uh, I think this is the PDF of beta power alpha by gamma of alpha. So, this gamma is a gamma function. Uh, so, I will I'll say something about it in a little while. x power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta x, okay. So, this gamma is called the uh, gamma of t is the gamma function. It has a certain complicated integral definition. As far as we are concerned, uh, you can treat gamma function as some known function. It is like uh, log x, e power x, sin x, cos x, any other function that you think you know, you can assume this gamma function is something that you know. So, it is the gamma function and this is how the PDF looks. Uh, the expected value of gamma is alpha by beta and uh, in fact, expected value of uh, x squared I think is alpha squared by beta squared plus uh, alpha by beta squared if I am not wrong, something like this, okay. So, that is the, that is some details of the gamma distribution. So, let us now use it as a prior with this Poisson distribution. So, you will see it is a very interesting little thing. So, prior is uh, lambda is actually distributed as gamma of alpha beta. So, uh, the PDF is, is uh, proportional to uh, lambda power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta lambda, okay. So, this is something good to know. So, posterior is going to be equal to proportional to sorry likelihood, and likelihood you can see from here it is e power minus n lambda, lambda power x 1 plus x n right. So, we have seen this, we have seen this times the prior, prior is lambda power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta lambda. So, this is likelihood. So, you see it is the same method, I mean whatever it is, is you always use the same method, just repeat the same thing, it's just that the functions look a little bit complicated, so you may get a little nervous about it, but it is it's just the same, nothing, nothing changes in this. So, this is equal to lambda power x1 plus xn plus alpha minus 1 e power minus beta plus n lambda. Remind you of anything? This kind of a PDF, what is this distribution? This is gamma again, right, isn't it? Gamma x1 plus xn plus alpha beta plus n. There you go. Not too bad, isn't it? So, once you identify the gamma distribution, see, net is prior is gamma, posterior is also gamma. So, gamma is conjugate prior. For uh, Poisson mean. nice, isn't it? So, it is good to know. Uh, we know so many Poisson uh, conjugate priors now, right? For uh, Bernoulli, IID Bernoulli, we know beta is the conjugate prior. Uh, for uh, Poisson, we know uh, gamma is the conjugate prior, okay? Conjugate priors are good to know. So, uh, what is the posterior mean? So, lambda hat base, base is uh, posterior mean. We know for a gamma distribution, it is alpha by beta and this guy by this guy. <coughs> so, that is just x1 plus xn plus alpha by n plus beta. So, notice how whenever you use, use this conjugate prior, you are trying to find the, you know, uh, estimate the mean, right, distribution mean, you have this plus alpha plus beta, you know, adding, it is like you see some samples, you have to do some additional adjustments to the samples and additional adjustments to the n and imagine something else is going on to get to the correct answer, okay. So, sort of intriguing uh, in how, how similar these things are, okay. So, hopefully these three uh, problems uh, showed you this uh, textbook method of given the distribution, IID samples, you know the distribution, uh, different ways of getting to the parameters, right. Method of moments, uh, maximum likelihood 
and uh, Bayesian estimation. Okay, so in some sense these are simple mechanical procedures, but it is possible that you will make some mistakes here, there, etc. Uh, hopefully you can avoid these mistakes. Uh, do not try to think that you have to remember all these facts. I mean, in most cases the unknown distributions will be given to you. If we ask you a problem like a gamma distribution, we will give you the gamma distribution, we will give you the expected value of the gamma. We will only expect you to remember the procedure for method of moments, procedure for maximum likelihood, procedure for Bayesian uh, posterior mean computations. Okay? Uh, thank you very much.